Hi, I'm Marcus with IndieMusicLab.com. So when I first started recording music, the biggest frustration I would have continually was my dire lack of vocal ability. Now, I know I'm not the only one. Many of you, this is your precise struggle. You start to figure out recording, you start to figure out your doll, and you got, you know, enough equipment to like record, and maybe you play guitar, but man, when it comes to recording that vocal, you just want to like scream into the night, just begging for someone to take you out of your vocal misery. I get it. I've been there, and that is why I'm making this video. Now, here's what often happens. As we start to record our own songs and we realize how bad our vocals sound, what do we do? We get enticed, we get baited by UAD's new tape saturation plugin or Slate Digital's modeling mic uh, package, right? And we just really want to believe that this is going to solve my vocal problems. And so we go buy it. And then what happens? You know the story. Our vocals get marginally better, right? Just a little bit, but not even close to reaching the threshold of what we're looking for. And then what happens is there's often a tipping point where we realize, oh, this isn't a microphone problem. This isn't a gear problem. This is a me problem. The sound coming out of my mouth, that's where the problem is. And when you realize that, that is when you can start to change it. That is when you can start to actually get better at vocals when you, as Joe Gilder loves to say, get it right at the source. So in today's video, unlike a lot of my videos, which focus in on, you know, inside of a DAW, production, mixing, all of that, I am going to go all the way to the source and I'm just going to give you a couple insider tips for improving your vocals before they ever touch a microphone. This is coming from someone whose vocals used to sound like garbage. I'm not exaggerating. I was awful, but I didn't let that stop me. And I was like, okay, how can I get better at this? And I went to work at it. And you can do the same thing, and I'm here to help you kickstart that process. In this video, I've narrowed it down for you. I'm not going to overwhelm you with all the different methodologies. I'm just going to give you three tips, three steps to get you started, to give you some confidence so that you can really get started on this journey of maximizing your vocal skills. So let's jump right in. All right, step one for improving your vocals is you got to articulate. This is unbelievably important, and it gets so overlooked by basically everybody. So I want to give you an example of a recording that I did. This is a remake of a 1975 song. Listen to what my vocals sound like on this remake. Do you notice how the vocals are very articulated? I'm like actually pronouncing the words as I'm singing. Now let's compare that to this. I recorded a different take to really show you what this looks like and what it sounds like when you don't articulate well. Have a listen. Now let's switch back again to the original articulated version. Crazy, right? And what's really wild about this is I didn't change any of the vocal processing. The compression, the saturation, the reverb, the delay, it's all the same. The autotune, it's all the same. It's all there. The only thing that changed was my energy and my articulation. I went from this to this, you know, just kind of nonchalantly going through it. Doesn't work. Now, the way that I recommend you practice this is very important. So, no one has to hear this. You can do this in, their, in your bedroom. You can do this when you're you know, driving alone in the car, whatever the case is. What I want you to practice is going completely to the other side, completely swing the pendulum to the other side and over articulate. So literally, you want to sing like this and really over enunciate like this. That is how I want you to sing uh, when you're just starting this. Not at an open mic, not when you're recording, just to build this skill of articulation, because then here's what happens. You have the current, let's say, inarticulate version of where you are now. And then if you completely over exaggerate it, it wakes up your brain and your brain's like, oh, we are definitely changing something here. Because then once you have the skill and you have those two pools, you can just reel it in and bring it to the middle. 
So there you go. Go sound like a silly goose for a while. And if you're not laughing at yourself while you're doing it, you're probably doing it wrong. So just go nuts, completely over articulate so that you can build the skill and then you can start to reel it in from there. Okay, step two for improving your vocals is use sounds as springboards to better tone. This is massive. And I, I gotta give a shout out to my friend and vocal coach, Tyler Wysong. When he showed me this and I started implementing this, it changed the game. Here is all it is. It's very simple. All you do is pick a sound and you have a song that you're trying to sing or you're trying to record. You use that sound instead of the lyrics. That's all you do. So you take a song that might be like, look at the stars, see how they shine for you. And you go, beep, 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 beep. You just practice using an exercise. Now, I have three exercises for you to get started on, and then you can just go and try any of, like just look up on YouTube vocal exercises and try all of them and see which ones really feel the best to you. But the three that I recommend you start with are B, like I just did, V, especially if you want more of that textured tone. So V, 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 V. And then the third exercise is NG is my personal favorite one, and it sounds more strange. But the NG really helps kind of to give that warmth and that sense of balance to your tone so that it's not, you know, look at the stars. Instead, it's look at the stars. Right? It's that type of thing. This is so powerful, guys. Please start implementing this, start practicing like this. And especially, this will be especially helpful, not only as like an everyday, just to build this skill, to build this habit, but if you're in a gotta have it situation where you gotta get a good vocal take, you got everything set up, do this. Go through the song a couple times using an exercise that really feels good to you and then switch back and forth. Maybe go through the song one time through with just the exercise and then the next time go line by line and alternate because what you're doing here is you're taking the exercise and that is creating its sort of um, resonance, its placement inside of your head as you're singing it and everything that's going on with the mechanism of your voice. And then you are trying to maintain that. So you're building it and then you try to maintain it as you bring in the actual lyrics. So you're first locking in the tone, locking in the resonance, locking in the placement and then you bring in the actual lyrics and then it just sounds just ridiculously better when you take that approach. So go implement this. The reason I'm so passionate about it is because it literally changed my voice. This completely helped me to cross that bridge and to become so much more consistent where even if I had a bad voice day, I could still show up and get a really, really good take because I would use this exercise and I would lock in my tone using an exercise before I sang the actual words of the song. All right, and finally, step number three, you gotta get a plan. Now, this is much more of a long-term sort of step than the first two are. The first two, if you go and implement them, you'll get results very quickly. Now, you might lose them, which is why you need to continue doing them so that they become habits, so that your voice really starts to um, change and that is now your you know habitual way of doing it. But this third step here, at some point, you have to take a long-term approach. You gotta get a plan. And that is exactly my story. So I'm just gonna walk you through very quickly what I used to sound like versus what I sound like now. So in 2012, which is basically when I first started recording and I first learned even what a doll was, this is what my vocals sounded like. Changeless and solid. I had to cut that short, cause damn, that is cringe, right? So that is what it used to sound like. Here is what my vocals sound like now. Now, let me be very clear. This did not happen overnight. This was not an easy fix. This was not a TikTok fix. This took time. This was a lot of like you start out and it's kind of janky. You have your like really bad days and then you get slightly better and it's just, you know, doing this. But then you'll have a few spikes. Because I had a plan, 
See, this is what James Clear calls the plateau of latent potential, I think it is, where it's that first few weeks of trying to develop a new skill or a new habit where you're just kind of teetering. You're not really seeing a whole lot of growth happen. But then if you stick with it and you follow through on the plan, you will start to see those spikes happen a few weeks in. And that's my story. Now, if you're asking, like, what did I do exactly? Well, I just did some research online. I found some very reputable reputable vocal coaches through a website, and I booked a couple vocal lessons. And through that, I would buy, I bought one of their self-study programs, and I use that to kind of really work on my skills. And I'm telling you this not because you necessarily have to follow through on exactly what worked for me, because it's not as much the train I was in, it's just the fact that I got on a train and I had a destination in mind. So it doesn't really matter which plan you use, just as long as it's a good plan, as long as the plan actually is grounded on results. So you just gotta take the long-term approach, you gotta be patient with yourself, and you gotta give it time. As much as I wanna tell you that, you know, overnight you can completely change your vocal tone, even if you could do that, and that's technically, yeah, it is possible because you'll always you'll hear that from like vocal coaches and students who go in and they'll like raise their pitch by like two octaves overnight from just one or two lessons. That's kind of true, but it's not entirely true because you're probably going to lose that skill if that doesn't become a habit. If you don't really double down on those new connections that you're making in your brain, you're probably going to lose them which is why it is so important to get a plan. This is where I'm just gonna be completely straight with you. If you really wanna get good at vocals, just go buy my vocals course. In these YouTube videos, I usually just offer you some extra free things, but today, I, if you're still watching this, I am trusting that you are the type of person who isn't just in this game to find a quick hack and a quick trick to like, boom, you have a great vocal sound now. This is a lot like going to the gym, this is a lot like, changing your body over time, changing your voice, it takes time. And so I'll just leave a link in the description if you would like to go check out the Wow Factor Vocals course. So my friend, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you found great value in these tips that I shared with you today. These were life-changing for me from my personal experience. I can tell you, go implement these. Start articulating more when you sing. Don't be so nonchalant. Get in there, articulate, right? And then also use exercises to double down on really good vocal resonance, vocal tone, vocal placement. Use those exercises and then maintain that positioning as you then bring in the actual words of the song. And then finally, you gotta get a plan. At some point, you just gotta get a plan, like a long-term strategy and plan so that you can maximize your vocals for years and years to come. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.